Evening, everybody. Welcome to KMS Star Wars, Episode 3. Thanks for joining us. We've got an exciting episode planned tonight. We're going to be looking back at KMS basketball team's uh, first match. Uh, we're going to be breaking down every player and uh, talking about uh, what Star Wars droid they, they most play like. And, of course, we'll be starting off, as we always do, by taking questions from our, our audience. So let's get right to it. All right, first question up on the board. How has the popularity and success of KMS Star Wars affected your life? Well, you know, as you can imagine, it's it's hard. It's it's challenging, you know. Every time I leave the house, I'm, I'm getting swarmed by uh, people um, recognizing me and uh, telling me what big fans they are. But um, I'm taking it all in stride, you know. I, I realize, you know, it's, it's obviously a distraction in my life. I'm trying to do my day-to-day -day duties. But uh, I, I think it's worth it to... to uh, if for the difference I'm making in all these fans' lives. Next question. All right. Um, has Portnoy or any other platforms reached out with contract offers for the show? Uh, listen, I'm clear right from the start. I am uh, committed and dedicated to the Miners Minifan Network. You know, they gave us the opportunity. They've been great. You know, obviously, you know, lots of platforms have been calling in. Um, Portnoy has not. I, I imagine he's using you know, some of his underlings to back channel to try to get some good offers in. And, you know, we've had lots of offers, but, you know, as I said, right now, I'm committed to the Miners Minifan Network. Next one up. How long do you think you can keep this up? Aren't you already scraping the bottom of the barrel for ideas? Uh, no, no, I'm not. You know, these ideas, they just, you know, the KMS world happens, it rolls, they, they come up with uh, new things, with basketball, these feuds, and, uh, yeah, it's quite natural, and uh, I think there's a really an endless depth of uh, of KMS Star Wars content for the you know the next three to three to twelve years. Why does it seem like you have more viewer questions than actual views on YouTube? Uh, it probably seems that way to you because uh, you're a moron who who has problem with simple math. Now. Either that or you're falling into the, the trap of, of YouTube and it's, you know, it's woke agenda. You know, it's, it's clear, clear that, that something's been happening. The, the show is being sabotaged on YouTube. Um, and number one sus suspect is obviously Jonathan Scranton. You know, he's, he's clearly bought YouTube views in the past trying to boost his own shows. So it, it's, I mean, it's pretty obvious to anyone with a brain that he, is, he has bought negative views for the show. But... Um, you know, just talk to anyone on the street. They know what, what a great what a great show this is, and you know you, you can't you can't you know go just by the views on YouTube. Is this a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit what? Captain Phasm, I think uh, I think this question got cut off here. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what. It's probably just bad cropping on your part. Let's go on to the let's go on to the next one. This is the worst show I've ever seen. Captain, Captain, Phasm, what are we doing here? This is the question. This is the question segment not the dumb statement section please let's let's move on why is this the worst show i have ever seen all right captain i think we're um ready to move on to the next segment please thank you let's jump right into the main segment of the show where we'll be looking at the kms basketball team's game from last thursday uh looking at every single player from top down to bottom uh and and telling you which uh, star wars droid they resemble the most in their play style so let's get started right away with uh, uh, the captain and best player, Kirk Minahan. Uh, played great, uh, made shots, made, made some threes even. You know, if you haven't been playing for a while, that's that's tough to do. So um, great effort and great leadership. Um, and, and that's what I'd like to uh, showcase here. You see him here on the footage uh, leading the team through a, it was a timeout or halftime, rallying the troops, being the true leader that the team needs. And that reminds me, um, both aspects of this remind me of R2-D2. You know, he's most important droid in the star wars universe he's always you know a key part of the plot in every play and uh he's also a leader um you know, if you remember uh from the clone wars tv show there was a, a several episode arc um about what they called the d squad and that was um a little squadron of droids that that r2 led um to great victory over those few episodes so um that, that's kirk you know he's our r2 he's gonna lead this whole team of droids uh as far as, they, as he can take them. Next, we look at Beanbag Ron. Beanbag Ron was a, a, a huge part of the team. You know, jumped right up to that, that second spot um, on the team, right there with Kirk. You know, he's, he's going to be there. Kirk needs to take a breather. Beanbag Ron needs to be on the court and, and doing what he does. 
Um, he's scrappy. He's all-purpose. He's, he's on offense and defense. Very aggressive. Um, he reminds me of the, the probably the second most important droid in the Star Wars universe, which is Chopper. You know, he wasn't in any of the movies, but um, he was a big part of the uh, Star Wars animated show Rebels and uh, the new show um, Ahsoka. Um, he's a great droid, very funny. He sometimes flies. He has those, those arms things that wave out. And, you know, that's really made me think of Ron. Ron's out there waving his arms around, uh, getting in people's face on defense. And, uh, yeah, he's a really great droid. You know, if you're not familiar with those shows, I, I, I um, suggest you watch him. You know, Chopper is, is a fan favorite droid all around. Continuing down the list, um, we get to Patrick Ford. Um, Patrick Ford's a solid contributor. I, I'd say I was, I was very impressed with his play style. Um, you know, he's, he's good. He's not missing many turnovers, not taking, not missing a ton of shots. He's hitting the ones he takes. Um, had a big three here, you know, as we see in the footage. Um, yeah, played great. V very surprised by him. Um, solid. Uh, his play reminded me of the um, droid Hu Yang, who is also in the uh, Ahsoka show. And, and from way back, um, I think he was in Clone Wars, he was actually a, a droid, a uh, professor droid, in, in teaching the Jedi younglings. Um, so that, that's sort of uh, Patrick, you know, he's sort of the professor type, you know, we see him in Drips of the Office, he's, you know, knowledgeable, you know, but, um, but he's out there, he's getting the job done. So uh, kudos to Patrick. You know, next we have Cinema Lord. Um, Cinema Lord had an okay game. He was, he was, he was um, shaking off some rust, hadn't played in a while maybe. Um, you know, had, had Tim extended breathers um, on the sideline. But uh, he was out there, he's, you know, contributing. Here we see some footage of him, uh, you know, out there playing hard. Uh, more important though, the way he played though, was the way he looked. And he looked good in those cargo shorts. And, and that's what's important. So that reminds me, and no droid looks better than C-3PO shiny gold um you know also, also you know pretty important droid you know in the universe in the movies yeah um yeah Simulord, uh i expect a lot of good things about Simulord. most importantly i expect him to uh to, to look good and to all the other team with his appearance because of the cargo shorts now we're getting more down to the middle of the pack of the team you know not great players but not you know detrimental to the team and then that's where we find you know john john and warren uh, we see him here bringing the ball to court, an important part of the game. Not everybody can do it. John can do it. You know, he's out there. He's He had some turnovers. He had some missed shots. I don't think he had any points. But, um, you know, he, he'll, he'll be there. He'll be doing good stuff. Reminds me of the battle droids from uh, the Clone Wars in Episode 2 and 3. You know, they're the Separatist army. They're out there. They're following orders, doing their, what their programming says. You know, if they come against a Jedi, yeah, they're going to get their head blasted off. E easy, you know, without any any competition. But, you know, you put a hundred of them out there, you know, they, they might win a game. So um, let, let's let's keep an eye on John. Maybe he can whoop the ranks in the next couple of matches. And, and right there with John, we have Gus. Gus is, you know, the spark plug for the team. You know, he's out there. He's moving all on the court. You know, we see, you see in this footage... Um, you know, he's, he's not afraid to just get scrappy, get in there, put his face, you know, literally on the ground, um, and he's fast. And so that reminds me of BB-8, you know, BB-8, he's round, he's rolling up and down, he's fast, one of the you know, fastest droids I can recall. Um, he's always on the ground, spinning and, and grabbing things and, 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 and doing what he does. And then that's Gus, you know, he's, you know, not everybody understands what he's doing or why he's doing it, but he'll be, he'll do it and he'll be on the ground while he does it. Get to the bottom third of the team, it's starting to get a little iffy here with these with these players. Um, here we have Mutt, who you know didn't show up till halftime, um, and so I'm going to give him a little bit of leeway here because you know he didn't get his warm ups in, um, but he also just looked old out there. You know, here we see his first shot, he gets the ball. You know, can't even you know his, his can't even lift his arms enough to to reach the rim. You know, pure air ball. Um, he's kind of broke like a broken down droid, maybe like an R5D4, you know, he, he's out here in the, you know, the Jedi sand crawler, um, just like rusting away. And then, you know, Uncle Owen didn't even want him, couldn't even take two steps before he broke down. So, um, yeah, uh, Mutt is, is not looking good. You know, maybe a little more conditioning, a little more warm ups, he'll be able to get out there and contribute. But as it is now, it's, um, it looks like he might be abandoned on Tatooine. So now you have to pay attention closely to this footage. I, I had to scour the, the game a couple times to find footage of, of Mick out there on the court doing something. But, and here he is. You see him um, inbounding the ball to Kirk, you know? Perfect. Um, 
yeah, he's he's one. I think I don't know if it's a conditioning thing. You know, maybe he's not wearing enough layers. Maybe he straps on three or four more layers of clothes to be able to do more. Um, kind of reminded me of one of those mouse droids um, that the Empire has. Um, you see them a lot in Episode Four on Death Stars and bases and, and um, big ships. There are the little guys that always run around people's feet. If, if you don't notice, you got to look for them though. If you don't notice them, it's very easy to miss them. You know, stormtroopers are always stepping on them. So. Um, yeah, the little Mick's got a, a little ways to go before he uh, moves up the uh, droid depth chart here. And so this leaves us with Coleman. Don't really know what to say here about Coleman. Um, we've all seen the footage of him oafishly lumbering up and down the court, gasping for breath, unable to box out, unable to grab rebounds, can't get shots up. You know, we've seen the footage here. He's like, shoots a three-pointer and doesn't even brick it. It hits this... Back, all backboard, which is really hard to do. You know, I was looking over lots of droids, see, trying to find a big droid that maybe is strong but can't do much. You know, I was looking at those loader droids from Obi-Wan, but it was just way too productive. You know, they're moving things, you know, being a productive part of the team. This guy, I don't know what to say. So I had to cheat. Um, I had to stray away from the droids. The only way I could find a comp for Coleman here in the Star Wars universe is the the Zarlacc bit, you know, he's big, not moving, and, you know, he's going to spend his eternity just, you know, d digesting any organic matter you'll shove down, he can shove down his face, so that's Coleman, um, not, unfortunately, not a bright star in the KMS basketball world, but, uh, you know, maybe, maybe something will happen, he was out there practicing, you know, blocking his own teammate's shot, so, you know, maybe he can turn it around. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. It was a, a great show. You know, loved watching the basketball game. I hope you did, too. I uh, hope you enjoyed this show and hope you uh, learned a little bit more about basketball and Star Wars droids, and um, maybe we'll see you again sometime. Thanks for tuning in.